OTAN, Outreach and Technical Assistance Network. So hopefully everybody is here for the 2023 new administrator orientation for the Workforce Innovation and Opportunity Act, specifically Title II, Adult Education and Family Literacy Act. Okay, I don't see people running towards the door, so I want to officially welcome you all. I am Jim Shields, the an Education Programs Consultant with the CDE Adult Education Office. And on behalf of my colleagues and our state leadership partner, we are glad that you are here. And uh, I think you'll find the next several days very useful as far as gathering information uh, for the WIOA grant. So the purpose is to provide a, a general overview of, of WIOA and more specifically AFLA. Um, we're we're going to let you know what the grant implementation requirements are, the required deliverables and the available resources for you. And this will be the agenda for today. After this introduction, one of our state leadership partners, CalPro, is going to present to you. And then after a break, we will have additional presentations on the adult education and federal program monitoring. Hopefully after a hearty lunch, there will be a presentation for you on America's Job Centers of California and the MOU and working relationship that you hopefully already have in place with your local AJCC. And then at that point of the day, if you do not receive, we owe a section 225, that's funding for corrections, your day will be over. But if you do receive 225 funding, please stick around for that final presentation of the day. And tomorrow, we will be kicking things off with another presentation from one of our partners, CASAS. And then after a break, my colleague Arturo will be presenting on WIO of Fiscal Compliance. And uh, this will be the presentation uh, that will be occurring uh, when that national alert goes out, just, just so you know. So just be prepared for that. And then after lunch, we will be discussing WIOA data and accountability requirements. And uh, that again, if you do not receive WIOA Section 243 IELCE funding, your day will be over. You can head on out. But if, if you do receive Section 243 funding, please come back after the break for the presentation on that. All right. And on day three, we will be wrapping up with a final presentation from OTAN, which is another one of our state leadership partners. We'll do a brief wrap up. And then at that point, there will be breakout sessions that you will have with your assigned CDE consultant. Now I'd like to turn things over to my supervisor, Dr. Carolyn Zachary. She is the education administrator for the Adult Education Office and the state director of education in, uh, of adult education in California. Thanks so much, Jim. And I too wanna to welcome everyone to our new administrator and also our this year because it's a new grant cycle, new grantee um, individuals here today. So thank you for being with us. I just want to share a little bit of overview of the Adult Education Office and CDE so that you have some of that information. The mission of our um, Adult Ed Office is to advance California's economic workforce development and societal gains by preparing adult learners for college career and civic responsibility. Next slide. The areas that um, we're going to cover in this whole orientation um, are an overview of CDE, that's what we're gonna be talking about here, and then some of the funding. I'm gonna to touch on CAPE just a little bit, and then um, go into a little more detail on WIOA AFLA. Those are those acronyms that we use for Workforce Innovation Opportunity Act and Adult Education Family Literacy Act. Next slide. Throughout this whole orientation, you're going to learn about data and accountability. You're going to learn about the AJCCs and the Memorandum of Understanding that all 
of our grantees are required to have. You're going to learn, um, you're going to get a fiscal overview and some information on compliance with fiscal requirements. We'll talk about payment points and also on federal program monitoring. Next slide. The Adult Education Office sits within the Career and College Transition Division. And in that division, we have multiple offices and we've even added some more offices to this. I believe that we are up to, we're probably up to seven or eight offices now within our Career and College Transition Division. And we focus everywhere from community schools, which um, adult education should be partnering. If your district has community schools, you should be partnering with them to our high school innovations office, uh, career technical education, and agriculture and family consumer sciences. So we really have a, a wide breadth in the portfolio within our division. Next slide, Jim. Within our adult education office itself, uh, we have, as Jim shared, he's an education programs consultant, and that's who you'll be connecting with, those who oversee your region. We have Rhonda Burnett, who is our staff systems manager. And we also have analysts, and, and your analysts will be those individuals that, that you will also work with, especially if you have questions related to how to put something into your ECR, which is your or into your budget or any of those pieces. And they're there to help you as well. And then we also have an office technician who um, really takes care of managing everything within our office. Uh, next slide. We also have um, a focus on equity within our office. And, but before we jump into that, this is a true false question and I will launch my poll because I know I have the power to do that. So the question is, adult education services has been, have been delivered to adult learners in California for over 160 years, true or false? I'll give everyone a minute or so to answer that. Yeah, how it's going. And Carolyn, we're at 100% answered. Okay, perfect. So we can end the poll. Oh, I can end the poll. I will end the poll. Share the results. So you can see a lot of people said true on there. And so I will tell you that the next, go on to the next slide, Jim. So I'm gonna tell you why we're focused on equity because California, and I believe this to be almost true. California was one of the first states to start adult education in 1856. And it was with the San Francisco Board of Education. And it was about equity. It was about the importance of individuals coming to California specifically, right? To learn English, to have the command of English, but also to have a trade. So they not only were teaching English as a second language in the basement of St. Mary's Cathedral in San Francisco, but they were also teaching trades and vocational education. And so, and the idea was really to ensure that immigrants coming were assimilated and were integrated into California, but they didn't want them to also, they didn't want them to lose their, um, their identity and their culture, but they did want them to be successful. And learning English was one of the ways for them to be successful. So our office has really been focused over the last several years on racial equity. And you might notice that when you have to do your WIOA um, uh, data at the end of this year, that you will have an additional table that's going to ask about some um, questions related to your staff and the number of educators that are um, educators of color. 
including your administrators, teachers, and counselors. And the reason we're asking that is because you've probably heard um, most of the studies done in the K-12 environment talk about students needing to see individuals that look like them in success in that position of uh, either an educator or as a scientist or as an astronaut or whatever, a doctor, whatever it might be. And so we're looking to see if our adult ed staff across the state is, is mirroring our students. And I do know that we have many adult ed programs that hire their students as they move through their program and encourage many of them to then be, go into education and to become adult ed teachers. So we're really looking at all of that as um, part of our work within our office. Next slide, Jim. So in California, the adult education system has two funding streams. One is the state funding, which is, um, and I don't think that's the right amount. Could be. Um, I think it's more than that, but it's it's well over six hundred million dollars for Cape funding, and that is divided into the seventy one consortia across the state. And many of you will be involved in, especially if you're in a K twelve district or a community college, you are automatically in your Cape consortium. If you are a CBO, then you may want to look at um, partnering with your Cape Consortia to ensure Thank that you. there's an expansion oh, of nice. services Thank you. across um, across your, your consortia. Next slide. So in addition to the um, Cape funding, California receives, um, this is the amount that's going out to agencies, uh, $97 million. We receive a total of about $112 million, but some of that is for administration, 5%, just as you have to limit your um, admin cost to 5%. Then we also have the funding that goes to our state leadership projects, which you will hear from CalPRO soon, and then cost us tomorrow and OCAN on Thursday. And that's about 12 and a half percent goes to that. So we're able to deliver out to all of you $97 million. So if you think about the investment in California as it relates to adult education, we're talking about 800 when we're at federal um, presentations or federal conferences and people ask, about that, they're always quite shocked at the amount of dollars that are in California to support adult education. Next slide. So the, this is how we break down those, uh, that $97 million. There are very specific, some very specific percentages related to um, IELCE, but you'll see that the bulk of our funding really goes for that ABE, ELA, and EL Civics funding at almost $50 million. Uh, next slide. So are we at, oops, uh, that one right there, yep. So be, if you looked at that funding, you'll see that because nearly 50% of those dollars are really focused on adult literacy. Right, it's really looking at ensuring that individuals are learning English and that they have literacy. And then we're really looking at, um, within WIOA, there's a focus on occupation and training and moving individuals into the workforce. And so you'll get a lot more information on these um, on WIOA. Um, a little later this morning, I'll be sharing WIOA 231 again, which is the bulk of our funding. And then you'll learn much more about the partnerships that you need to be developing or strengthening with your local workforce development board 
and your AJCCs. So both of those are gonna be talked about a little later on. Uh, next slide. So initiatives that are continuing to happen that we are doing, one is there is a mandatory student technology intake survey that all students should be doing annually. We encourage you to do this during your orientation um, that you have and then somehow during it on an annual basis for students to do this. This survey, the data from this survey we share with our partners at um, the California Technology Department because we are writing our digital equity plan and we need to make sure we have this data. And so that really helps us to uh, show the need for bandwidth in certain areas or just Wi-Fi or, or connectivity in areas of the state. It also shows the need for uh, multiple devices that students might need. But it also gives you, as an administrator, you actually get to see at student, student level data. So you'll see what students might need you to loan them a device or might need you to assist them in some um, digital literacy. So that's, that's the first thing. The second initiative that is ongoing is our digital learning guidance. And um, I'm sure Netta can drop in a link to that, but this is an, a living document really focused on how we are ensuring that students are continuing to have opportunities to learn in hybrid, high flex, or online situations. One of the things that we learned from the pandemic is that our students are resilient and that they can learn online and that many of them liked the opportunity to extend their learning or to move their learning, move through their learning faster by having online opportunities. So this guidance is continuing to develop. We are going to be including information in that, uh, working on this year about artificial intelligence because that's a, a big, a big deal now that wasn't when we were, well, we wrote this just, I don't know, Netta helped me two years ago. I mean, it's just amazing how, how things have changed, right? Yeah. yeah. And then the EL Civics Exchange, we encourage you to also be actively participating in the EL Civics Exchange. And I'm hoping Netta or Melinda can drop that in the chat and sharing your what you're doing with your uh, within EL Civics there and also gaining ideas. Um, next slide. So I just wanna thank you very much. Again, that was a quick overview. That's the very high level. Um, a very high level overview. And so. Um, oh, and it, it looks like we have um, some questions in the Q&A. Okay. Do, do you want me to call those yeah. up? Yeah, let's let's do that because we have a minute okay. before Marianne has to jump okay. in. Um, okay, we have a few comments and the question we have, how do we access the student responses for the tech survey? So your school, you should be able to access those on um, the OAR site. Is that correct, uh, Netta? Yes, that's correct. Yep. It should be in the spreadsheet format for you. Next question, Jim. And there's just a few more comments. Uh, if I, I guess with the May revise, the CAPE total for 23-24 is $645 million. 684,000. So I thought so, I had the most uh, recent one there, but that's yeah. the uh, that's the final figure there. All right. And, Thank you for whoever that put that in there. Yeah. Neil. And then uh, Neil also wanted to point out um, there's also an additional 130 million from the healthcare ELL funding. So just some yeah. uh, additional info for people. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Thanks, Neil, for adding that in. 